As a builder, my number one enemy is water. 80% of construction defect litigation is water related. So when it comes to water management in my jobs, I don't mess around. You gotta do it right as a builder. Now this job behind me, if you remember, this is the one that Jordan and I hose tested, that stone facade, and found that a ton of water got behind that facade. All facades leak, guys. We need to make sure that the waterproofing behind there is done correctly. And this product used here, you should definitely not use this. In fact, I would say it shouldn't even be sold in America. On today's episode, I'm gonna show you some of the problems we found, how to fix them the right way, and how to make a difference when it comes to your number one enemy. So let's get going. Okay guys, now we're on the second floor balcony of this house. And I'm gonna show you a couple of the details and show you where some of the problems were. First of all, let's look at where we didn't have problems. Look at this side of the house. Back here, we've got a maybe foot, foot and a half overhang. And if you look at the field here where the OSB is, this was covered with that inferior house wrap. We've got no problems here. This looked really good. Because the house had a big umbrella over the house and it wasn't getting wet, we had no problems. On the other hand, in this corner here, look where we've got basically no overhang. I've got this fascia dying into this fascia board, and water could easily run all the way down this face, and now what's it gonna encounter right here? That house wrap, because it's not a fully adhered house wrap, it's not a fluid applied house wrap, had to be cut, and probably that water was running right here and getting right down behind that house wrap. And look how torn up this OSB is on this corner. It's all black and nasty looking. I mean, this corner right here, this flaking off, looks like it's 20 year old OSB. In fact, this house is six months old. We took this over in the drywall stage. It's never been lived in. It's never even had a CO. That stain, that black stain runs all the way down this corner, all the way to the base. I can't imagine how nasty this would look in 10 years. Okay, so we've got moisture sensitive materials, right? OSB is a modern man-made material. It's got some wood there, but it's a more broken down wood, which means small amounts of moisture that can't dry means it's gonna have problems. My friend David Nicastro says, if it can't dry, it's gonna die. And that's exactly what's happened here. Now, if we had plywood, maybe it would have done a little better, but ultimately plywood, if it can't dry, is also gonna have a problem. Now, how is this house also different than, let's say, a really old house that may have had some leaks? Think about that 1930s house that your grandma had that had no insulation, that had solid wood, had plenty of air through, flow through the cavity to dry it if it got wet. This is new construction. This is modern codes. We don't have air flow through there. It doesn't matter how much perm rating we have on that house wrap, there's not enough air flow through there to dry it. So that small amount of water that was getting down there, even after just a few months, tons of damage, tons of blackness happening out here. Not good. Now, as we took off the cladding, we also found a bunch of other problems. If you looked at uh, all the penetrations in the house, they were done extremely poorly, whether that was a flashing missing for the heads of the windows, whether that was a penetration for a duct coming through the wall or wires, all those were done substandard. And every one of those would have had some rotten mold within a really short period of time. The next thing though I wanna look at is these windows and the way these were installed originally. Now one thing the builder did right here was they did a really nice job of lacing their flashing around the three sides of the window. They cut the head of the house wrap at the windows on a 45 degree angle, flapped that up and put that peel and stick right on the OSB. In fact, you can still see that above these windows right here. But what was done poorly and that will be a problem, especially like on that gable window over there that we saw where that stone was leaking, was that there's no sill pans underneath here. Now sill pans are a big deal. Here's what they did. They ran this paper-based flashing, which is not a flexible flashing. It cuts really easily. They ran that into the corners and up, and they've got this vulnerable cut right here. But in the corners, they've got the paper, which you can see here, they probably dropped the window on there, cut that paper right away. It's not gonna provide any protection for that sill. And windows, many of them right from the factory leak, and they certainly leak over time, especially in the corners where those joints come together. So that's a place where we really need as a builder to put a sill pan in and to make sure the base of that window is waterproof and backcock so any water that gets in can run to the front side and get out. All right, so now that I've shown you some of the problems on the outside, you can see why we made the decision to rip off all the cladding on this house. It was not an easy decision. We spent a lot of money for our clients here, but now we know we're not gonna have any problems. Let's take a minute and let's actually test that existing house wrap and compare that to some other materials that I use on my jobs. All right, it's time for some backyard build show testing. As you guys know, we like to test materials 
and see how they perform in the real world. And as we've talked about already, this is junk. I don't think you should buy this, and frankly, I don't think you should sell it. It's super susceptible to job site damage. It's a little hard to tell the difference between this and this, but these are actually two different materials. Now, on this house, we ripped off all this stuff. This is a third-party manufacturer that's making it. I'm not really calling out the name and manufacturer of this, but honestly, you could buy this on just about any home center in America. And it's always gonna be this woven material, and it's got micro perforations. That's how they get a perm rating, because it's basically a plastic saran wrap on your house. If you were to hold this up to the sun or a really bright recessed can in your house, you can actually see these little pin dots of light through that. Now the problem with that though is it's not inherently waterproof. And the other big white ones that you see sold, this is by the big boys, this one is inherently waterproof. This is a woven material, it's not micro perforated. I've used this a lot over the years, although this is not my choice today. I've gone on to what I would consider some more bomber materials. So Jordan, you made a little test for us on how we could test this. Yep. Take over, what do you think, brother? All right, so what we've done, this is actually the house wrap off of this house. So on our video that we did, we That's cut right. this piece off. So this is actual filled house wrap. So we could see behind the uh, stone, right? Exactly, exactly. So this is the original OSB and house wrap. Now what I've done is I've slid a piece of uh, paper towel back behind there and then I've used two fasteners to okay. connect it. One is just a regular staple, which is how this was originally applied. The whole house, right? The, the whole house yeah. was done exactly this way. Just hammer tack, slap tacked on. And then this is the this is a stinger detail, which has this plastic cap here. Yep, so a cap fastener like exactly. this. Exactly, and that helps break that capillary action, which is going to suck the water in. So we're going to do a quick test to see how waterproof just this material is, how waterproof it is with the staple, and how waterproof it is with the cap. Okay, let's do it. All right. And what Jordan did was just pressurized a little bit of uh, dyed water here in a uh, backpack sprayer. And we're not putting a lot of pressure on here. <laughs> already, this is certainly can, not a, uh, you oh, can look already, at that. You look can at already that. see it. Two sprays and you can see it coming through yeah. right there. Yeah. Not waterproof at all. As soon as you put a staple on it, certainly not. And in fact, not waterproof in my previous testing without a staple on it. If you were just to put that flat on a, on a tabletop, pour a little water on there and put a little pressure on that water, the capillary action, it'll go through it immediately. And like we showed in that previous video, this house wrap, depending on your cladding, is going to see a lot of water. Now, Jordan, can you tell any difference when you get to well, the... Well, let uh, me, I'm going to pull this up here so we can pull the, where, where we can look at the, the cap staple. Okay. See how the cap staple did? Yeah. There we go. All right, so you can see. No, the just cap those two. kept it dry, didn't well, it? Well, no. Look, look here on the. Oh, look here on the zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> you see, right here, we are already leaking. Now, not so nearly even as with much, the cap staple. Even with the cap staple, I'm going to do a couple more sprays, just to, just for grins, right? Make it make it more apparent. It's definitely better, definitely better, but it is not by any stretch of the imagination. And we're, we're talking about a couple seconds of water here, and this is supposed to be on for the, ha the life of the house as your raincoat. Would you choose a raincoat like this for your house, knowing that your house is made of sensitive materials? No. Yeah, you can see it growing. Oh, you can totally see it You can now. see it growing right there for sure. Okay, so let's switch gears a little bit. What we're doing on this house was we used a temporary tarp, basically, and we used this uh, more expensive house wrap, and this is a much better choice. I've done a lot of houses with this. But ultimately, when it came to choosing the final house wrap, we decided for a, a much more bomber material. And I'm going to tell you about two materials that I really like that I think are really the way to go when it comes to waterproofing houses. And we talk about waterproofing a lot because, as I said, this is the number one enemy for me as a builder is water. So in this house, what we've chosen to do is a peel and stick product. This is a Luma Flash by Polywall. And what this is, this is an asphaltic material, meaning it's a rubberized asphalt, a modified asphalt, that is super sticky, is also quite thick, but here's the key, it's also got an aluminum face around the outside. So we've got really good waterproofing. As you can see, it's really thick. It's gonna have some nail sealability as well when we staple that and have a fastener holding pressure onto that because that asphalt has a little bit of give to it. The aluminum facer also means it can be exposed to the sun for a really long time. In fact, this now has a two-year exposure rating, so quite long. 
So on my builds that take a long time, I really like this. But the other reason I like this is because it's a fully applied product. We used a primer first and we applied it here. And if you look at this house, you can see it is absolutely stuck tight. We prime the OSB first and then when we pull this backer off and stick this sticky to the primed wall that has the primer on it, it's like what you're doing for a, a countertop. You know, if you've ever done a uh, Formica countertop, you know that when you put that Formica down on both surfaces that are tacky, you're not getting it off. It's just absolutely stuck. And that's why I really like this Aluma Flash Plus. However, this is a zero perm product, I mean, there's no, meaning there's no drying through it. Now this would have helped us though, up in this corner. Remember we had that stucco leak up in the corner with a no overhang house? Because it's fully adhered and stuck all the way to the OSB, even if we have a cut or a tear, that's gonna be some localized problem, but it's not gonna run down behind the material and rot all the way down to the ground like we had here. Now another option if you're in the north, and when I say climate zone one and two, what I'm really talking about is the southern U.S. I'm talking about the builder's climate zones. America has about eight climate zones. In the south, climate zone one, two, and three, you can get away with this. Really, bulk water is the biggest issue. But if you're in the north, you want to be cautious about that vapor barrier in the outside. You want to use a more permeable material, and a lot of people think in the south you need that too. So here's an option for you on the permeability side. This is Delta Vent S. This one happens to be a really thick, kind of like a jeans material. This is also very, very rugged on the job site, much more rugged than these inexpensive ones. But they make this in a self-adhere version, and that's what you've seen me make a bunch of videos on. Just like that Aluma Flash, when we put the primer on and we use the self-adhere version of this, we've got sticky on sticky. It sticks beautifully for, through the life of the house. It's not going to come off. So you, now you've got this fully applied house wrap that's great for waterproofing, but in this case is also vapor permeable. Any other uh, thoughts on any of this, Jordan, as we talked about these, these different options out there? Well, and just install, right? I mean, that's one of the, that's one of the big things. Like you said about the, the other product that is a good product, install is always the tricky part, getting those details around the windows, yeah. the doors, any penetrations you have in the wall. Yep. What I like about the self-adhered stuff is it sticks to the wall, yep. it sticks up against your windows, you can get the details right, you're not having to figure out origami. Um, and then th with the liquid flash systems that all these guys are selling now, yeah. you, can, you can fix any job site damage, you drop a ladder against it, you can do a liquid flash repair of just that spot, and you know you have a great product that no water is gonna be able to get behind and run behind. That's where all of this damage came from. You get in at one spot and it runs. Yeah, that's right. Now, in this house, we're using the Luma Flash, so we're using their mating material, which is that Blue Barrier 2200. That's their fluid applied, so we're doing all of our details, all our penetrations, all our window pans with that. But you want to use the correct one for the manufacturer. So, for instance, if you're using Zip as your sheathing in the outside, in effect, Zip system is basically a fully applied system, right? It already has the waterproofing on the sheathing, and then you're going to detail the seams. I like the Zip 2.0 method. I'll put a link to the description there. That's using fluid applied on all the details, all the penetrations, all the nail fasteners, really tightening it up. Guys, the point of this video is ultimately you as the builder need to make the choice for the waterproofing you use on your houses. We shoot ourselves in the foot all the time by value engineering out the important things in the house. You know, I've never built a house yet for a client that didn't think the initial budget was too high. Whether you're building 200, 500 million dollar or 10 million dollar houses when you first present that budget the clients always want to take something out and bring that cost down and we as a builder need to not offer up what's important to the clients and to us which of course is the waterproofing we need to say you know what let's take a look at your tile selections let's look at the appliance budget let's look at the countertops and the cabinets let's bring those down a notch we never want to say you know we could go with that cheaper house wrap or the cheaper waterproofing or the cheaper labor to install that we need to spend the money right on this because it's gonna be on the house for the life of the house. And as you can see, like on this house, a cheaper house wrap with some install issues led to problems on a house that wasn't even a year old. That's crazy. We should not let our clients dictate what to use on the outside of the house. Guys, thanks for joining Jordan and I here for some backyard field testing. More information on anything we talked about today, I'll put a link in the description to those manufacturers and a couple other videos that you should watch. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.